Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the third day of the ESC Congress, and we are having the pleasure uh, to welcome Dr. Gre Professor Greg Stone uh, to in for an interview on the latest science on intravascular imaging studies. Professor Stone, thank you so much for my accepting pleasure. our kind invitation. Uh, my first question is, uh, you did present an excellent network meta-analysis uh, on, on the intervascular imaging guided PCI uh, versus angiographic guided PCI. Uh, what is the main, what are the main take-home messages? Uh, what are the main results of this network meta-analysis? Well, thanks. Um, so we had a lot of excitement at ESC uh, Congress 2023 yeah. with multiple new studies of intravascular imaging guidance, especially with OCT. And as you know, there have been numerous prior meta-analyses of intravascular imaging guidance versus angiography guidance of stenting. And while they've generally shown reductions in major adverse cardiac events, none of them have been powered or at least shown a reduction in all-cause death or all MI. And there weren't that many prior OCT studies. So we thought that we now would update the meta-analysis, what we call the real-time meta-analysis that we presented at this session. And we looked at a total of 20 randomized trials with yeah. 12,428 patients. And we looked at all intravascular imaging, that is IVIS or OCT, mm -hmm. versus angiography guidance of PCI. We looked at just IVIS versus angio, OCT versus angio, and then IVIS versus OCT. Yeah. And the main analysis was all imaging versus angiography. Yeah. And there we saw um, statistically significant and very robust reductions in target lesion failure, uh, cardiac death, target vessel MI, and target lesion revascularization. A lot of this was driven by a 52% reduction in stent thrombosis, and so for the first time, we've been able to demonstrate a reduction in all-cause mortality by approximately 25%, and all myocardial infarction by about 20%, as well as a reduction in TLR and TVR by approximately 30%. So all intravascular imaging improves both safety and effectiveness outcomes, in particular, stent thrombosis, yeah. the most devastating Absolutely. complication of stenting. Yeah. And this network meta-analysis also included the recently announced the Illumion 4 trial and the October trial. That's correct. But not the Octavius trial, right? Right. We did not yet have access to the Octavius data, yeah. but we are updating, already uh, updating our yeah. real-time uh, updated meta-analysis with yeah. both the Octavius data and the Guide DES uh, trial yeah, data Guide that DES, were yeah. presented uh, two days yeah. ago. Yeah. And uh, so we'll have all that done within 24 or 48 hours. Yeah. Right. And I think Octavius in particular is very important yeah. because Prior to Octavius, there were only four trials with 1,316 patients mm -hmm. of OCT versus IVIS right. guidance. And Octavius was 2,008 patients, yeah. so more than 50% bigger than the yeah. other four trials yeah. combined. So that will really show the near equivalence of IVIS and OCT guidance. Great. So uh, the most, uh, how can I say, the wondering question is, uh, do you expect uh, an upgrade in the level of recommendation for the guidelines, for the next uh, further guidelines uh, on the intravascular imaging guided PCI. We know that it's now recommended with the level of evidence 2A in the recent uh, ACS guideline as well for the, for the management of the culprit lesion. But do you, do you expect uh, an upgrade with this? Yeah. I'm not, I don't sit on the guidelines committee, so I can't speak to what the guidelines committee will do. I can yeah. only give you my opinion. Yeah, of course, I'm not. So my, my opinion, opinion is that there should be an upgrade. Yeah. And now that you've got a, a modality like intravascular imaging that's been proven to reduce all mortality, all myocardial infarction, cut stent thrombosis in half, reduce target lesion and target vessel revascularization, it seems, you know, pretty, the data seems pretty robust. And I'll remind you, dr coronary drug-eluting stents have a class one indication compared to bare metal stents without reducing death, without reducing myocardial yeah. infarction, without reducing stent thrombosis, yeah. but just from reducing TLR, TVR. Yeah. So the data, I would say, is even stronger for intravascular imaging. imaging yeah. My last question is, uh, as you know, in also in the October trial, uh, the angio-guided PCI, the control group, uh, were allowed to use the IVUS guided PCI. Right. But the results show that only 15 to 20 percent of the patients were able to receive IVUS guided PCI. I think how can we address 
the low utilization of IWAS or OCT guided PCI in our daily practice? How can we address uh, these issues and how can we increase the utilization of uh, intravascular imaging guided PCI? I know the reimbursement and the funding is a major problem all over the world, but do you think it's only, only the reason? Well, you know, I think it is, you're, you're asking the exact right question because yeah. it's really time to try to overcome the impediments yeah. um, that are preventing the widespread use of intravascular imaging. It's just a routine part of the procedure. So if you look, uh, intravascular imaging during stent implantation is about 20% now in the United States. It's about 5% in Europe, but it's 95 to 98% in Japan. And Japan has regular reimbursement and they train, this is how you do the PCI procedure. So for me, it's a matter of reimbursement and it's a matter of training. training. We need to train our attendings better and they yeah. need to train the fellows better and make it part of the routine. Great, great. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Stone. Uh, today we had the pleasure to discuss with Professor Stone on latest science presented at the ESC Congress in Amsterdam. Thank you so much for watching us and please stay tuned for the next episodes of our interviews. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.